Hey guys, today I'm going to help answer a question that I see pop up all over the place in various forms, and that is simply, what should my subwoofers, my active powered subwoofers, be set to as far as the power settings? Depending on what you have, you're going to have multiple settings available. All of them, at least that I'm aware of, are going to have at least an on-off switch, a physical on-off switch. Sometimes it's software only, and it's more of a standby or on. I use SVS subs. I have two SB16s, their largest amplifier, and some of the largest amplifiers, period, available in any active subwoofer. So whatever power readings we get, that's going to be as bad as it gets, or as large as it gets, and it's going to be down from there. But I want to show you what the differences are. And I'm going to do this reading the power through one of my smart plugs, which has a real-time power consumption reading. So here's my right sub. Got the left one over there. The left one is plugged in right now to the power reading plug. Right there. So anything going through that, which is only the subwoofer, we're going to get a real-time reading. And I'll throw that up on the screen. Right now, you see the SVS app, just so you can see how I have it set. I have the displays currently turned on. I usually have them off just because I don't like seeing the lights, but they're on right now so we can verify their status. And right now, the both of them are set to auto. And what that means is after about 10, 15 minutes, somewhere in there, I wasn't sitting in here the whole time to see exactly how long, they will turn to a truly off state. Now it's a trickle of electricity coming through but I don't know exactly how much yet. We're gonna read it because it has to monitor for signal, but that's what they're set at right now. Now this one, because I just pulled up the app, it came back on. So that's why you see the display on this one. Over here, this has been sitting idle, haven't done anything with it in a half an hour or so, and it's off. And wow, I need to dust. <laughs> Yow. At least it's not piano black. Look at this, this is more of a gloss, but it's still not gloss gloss. Yeah, wow, I need to dust. We had the doors open because the weather was so nice. Oops, anyway, so this is truly off. Let's go ahead and pull up the Samsung app and we'll see what it's drawing. So here in Smart Things, we can pull up the smart plug that's plugged into, and in the bottom left, we can see it truly is drawing, well, at least nothing, registering zero watts. Like I said, there's a trickle going in there, but it's well under one watt, so it's showing zero. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch that left sub over to on. Now, there's no signal coming through, so it's not gonna be playing anything. This is what it's just sitting there doing nothing. And this is also how it comes out of the box. So we'll turn it to on, and now we'll check power consumption again. We can see the display is now set to on, but there's no signal. It's not doing anything. And we have a whopping 22 watts. So that is just pulling 22 watts, sitting there doing nothing. And that's it. So if you have two of them, 44 watts. It's like a very dim, old school light bulb sitting on all the time. That's it. It's not that big of a deal. Some people think these things pull hundreds of watts and they get all crazy. And some people even physically turn them off. They won't even use standby. They'll physically turn them on and off every time they want to use them. It's just nuts. So that is what we get out of doing nothing. Now let's play a movie at reference level. I'm going to measure it to about 110 or so dBs and that's out of the subwoofers, and we'll see what it pulls for that. Much better. So I hope that really dispels a lot of myths and misconceptions that people have about 
how much your subs are using out there. And it should be an eye opener that these massive subs playing super loud, that was louder than I typically even watch movies at, sip the power. During bass heavy scenes, we weren't even 170 watts. That is just no big deal. Of course, there are going to be some people that crank them up even more. And of course, the more subs you have, the more power you're going to draw. That's beside the point. I just want to give you guys a frame of reference. And just to make sure that you don't think it's because the smart plug is reading improperly, let's try a hairdryer. So here we've got it plugged in to just a standard old hair dryer, and these typically have a max of 1500 watts because they're made to put in just about any circuit in an average American home, which are limited to 1500 watts. And we're reading zero. Let's go ahead and turn it on low. And now high. So you can see that it very accurately is recording the proper power outage. This has an 1800 watt reporting and current flow limit, by the way. Very cool little plug. So as with most things, each mode has pros and cons. If you are the type that physically switch your things on and off, that's fine. I mean, if you've got a good reason why you wanna do that, there's no con to it other than it's annoying and something you have to do. If you want to use the auto, the only con, and this is the only reason I don't personally do it, is there is a slight delay. What that's looking for, and I'm talking about the in-app, the software version of the auto. I'm not talking about the trigger. Trigger is actually perfectly fine to do. Talk about that in a second. There is a slight delay. So when you play a movie, especially if you're jumping back in, mid-movie, there is a second or so where the sound comes from all your other speakers and boom, then the subs kick on, sometimes with a little bit of an audible pop because it's never good to turn on an amplifier with a hot signal going into it. But that's exactly what the auto does. I leave them on. The only con to that is a little bit of power consumption. Now, maybe you live in an area where your power is insanely expensive and an extra 22 watts just sitting there is a big deal to you. Maybe you count your pennies, totally fine. But that is really the only con to just leaving it on, which again, is the out of the box default. It works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with doing it other than a tiny bit of power. Trigger, which is not a software mode, it's an, a physical plug. You can plug a mono cable from your preamp or your amp, whatever has a trigger output into each of the subs, and that will turn it on just like an external amplifier. And again, totally fine. That will basically toggle between its almost zero slumber state and on, but there's no delay. That's why triggers are better than the software. So that's it. If you find this video helpful, you know what? Please share it. I'd really appreciate it. See you next time.